first thing I want you all to think about is that Buddhism and mental health have pretty much merged together in many ways. The way they are doing things gives the Buddhist the advantage in contemporary society, or modern day society. Um, even though the relationship Christianity has with humanity is sacrosanct, they are challenging it and they are doing things in a way that makes it hard for the Christian to survive. Granted, there are many Christians who believe in eating organic, and there are Christians who um, practice Christianity in one of its more pure forms, so they are able to turn to God with their anxieties and to face the troubles of life in a fair and balanced manner. But Christianity in its common form does not achieve that. And so this is what I am addressing in this video. Mental health, you know, when you talk about Buddhism in its com com uh, common form, keeps people calm, very collected, keeps people mindful. It stresses certain principles that are also found in Christianity but explores them more in a way that is more applicable in your day-to-day -day life and more conducive to survival in the New World Order. And since they do not believe in God, they are going to use that to indoctrinate people into Buddhism using mental health, the media, and so on. And they will attempt to screen out the other philosophies. And Buddhism will lead to their enlightenment or Luciferian doctrine which believes that you can make yourself God by uh, reaching a sort of nirvana state or a state of enlightenment. Thank you. Uh, I hear you. Um, okay. What do you think of the fact that women do not appreciate me and I've been talking to you a little bit about this? Uh, well, I think, you know, that just goes to show you how society's been taught that, you know, oh, you have to get with somebody who has monetary value. Because when you look at it, I have, you know, I, I have friends of many different backgrounds, some rich, mostly poor, and nine times out of ten, like, I have this one friend in particular, she's high, and she's always telling me, oh, I don't know why you take guys, you know, that don't have money or don't have things, and you know, you're just wasting your time. I just think that society's been conditioned or has conditioned the women of today's age to just basically look at a man and base his worth off of what he has and doesn't have. And unfortunately, you know what I mean? For you, it just seems like you just don't have enough. And so that's why I think, you know, it's bullshit because to me, there's much more to a man than just what he can offer monetarily. Sure, it's, you know, fun when you have cash, you could do a lot more things, but I think it's total bullshit and how that's what society expects. And that's why girls, you know, try, you know, to be nice and talking to you, but give you the slip because they feel like, you know, there's always gonna be someone out there with more money or more monetary value. It's just complete bullshit. And I've dated on either side. I've dated guys who were poor and had nothing to offer. And then I've dated guys who were rich and had plenty to offer. But there was a big difference in how I was treated in between the two. So I'm kind of neutral and I think totally unfounded because you should base you should base the relationships that you try to make off of how someone treats you and then you can you know build together if that's the case but again society you know kind of perpetuated that you know we need to have these things in order to be happy when you know you're just glossing over the fact that someone's personality could also be worthwhile and, you know, a little more fulfilling.
Alright, so. Christianity, you 
know, but this goes to show you not everyone's right. Everyone has a different perspective, unfortunately, and not everybody can see the usefulness and what it's like to be open, honest, and kind to somebody who is in need of that platform to be able to be open and actually talk like real, true stuff with somebody who is not going to judge them. And I think they perpetuate the Buddhist ideals more so with psychology because they're trying to make you feel like there's an easiness. But there's really no one way of being right versus wrong, I think. You know, it's all up into your, how you personally feel, how you personally view did you know that psychologists are some of the people who come up with what is socially normative they're some of the social planners right so when they start taking these certain they start taking sides in politics they are in a way attacking the opposition view using mental health and trying to play them out as crazy and there's already been there's already um, have been uh, outspoken atheistic feminists who have said that in the future they intend to drug fundamentalism or fundamental Christians and treat them you know fundamentalist Christians and treat it as if it's a mental disorder well of course they want to play God but you can't you can't do that and that's the problem with the world you know what I mean they want to be in control of everything any way they can, they're going to, you know, tell this person, oh, well, since you don't fit the quote-unquote norm, then, you know, you've obviously got some issues. And I think it's total bullshit because everyone's different. You know, everybody learns at a different pace. Everybody learns differently. So how is it right to, you know, stick everybody in one box and say, okay, if you don't believe this way, then something must be wrong with you. Right, uh, I'm, I'm going to end the interview there because I'm trying to keep it, you know, it's around 10 minutes right now. I'm trying to keep it kind of short. So, okay, uh, that's fine. Uh, so, what do you think about the fact that it's come out on mainstream news that our water supplies in almost every city are polluted with these psych meds that the water companies aren't unable to bleach out or erase from our water? So therefore, even the people who don't take psych meds, you know, are put in a position where it behooves them to address this problem of an over-aggressive marketing plan with psychiatric medications that don't work anyway, since they are poisoning our water. I think it's bullshit. I'm pretty upset about it because, you know, not everybody is as crazy as it seems. And who are they to say over somebody else's sanity or not you know yep and so all, all, all those people that think it's okay to turn a blind eye you know and they're making their coffee in the morning or they're cooking some eggs or something using the tap water you know it's 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 stabbing them in the you know it's hitting them in the butt stinging them in the butt <laughs> all right so um Okay. What, what do you think about the bigger picture of this? Psychiatry gives a lot of people work. Lab technicians, ambulance drivers, psych ward staff, outpatient staff, therapists, psychologists. Mental health is a huge industry. The pharmaceutical company is the most profitable industry. And it touches on the military. There's military psychology, military psychiatry. So this becomes a matter of national security since part of the security hold on, of the... Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. This all touches on the matter of national security because it it's about tax money, it's about jobs, it's about the economy, 
It's about financial security, national financial security. You know, financial security on a national level. So therefore, it touches on national security. When you're attacking this, in a way, you're attacking the finances of the West, especially America. Nobody else's opinion matters except for those higher up in 
control engineers push the despicable falsehood that we live in a they propound that we live in a free and open society while the whole time we're being ruled by intelligence agencies secret governments and secret societies documentary where I got that, it was 1979 ABC documentary about MK Ultra. Um, they said the CIA on record was responsible for the acid and psychedelic movement in the 60s, I believe it was, with all those hippies and all those druggies, because a bunch of MK Ultra psychologists at college uh, campuses had, you know, leaked what was going on and shared a lot of LSD and stuff like this. So the CIA on record started the crack epidemic. That was exposed by the San Jose Mercury News. They brought crack into the black communities and, and our cocaine, and, and you know, and they made crack from it in California. And then on record, they're also responsible for the acid and psychedelic movements. These people started the drug movement, you know, all, all the, the worst drug movements that we have. And I bet you they're responsible for the, the meth epidemic we are seeing these days. say the CIA are responsible for the prescription pill epidemic, the psych pill med epidemic we see. And do you know that 80% of people who are on heroin started with prescription opiate painkillers? Mm -hmm. It triggers the same part of the brain. So when you truly slice it, you know, all these epidemics were pretty much caused by the CIA slash mind control community, which got the idea from secret societies that have a history of experimenting with mind-altering substances as part of their cults and, and you know, covert religions. Yeah, and that's a really sad thing that there's a large number of the amount of people falling for all of this. Everything you just listed, everything you're speaking of, you know? Too bad we can't have more Yeah. 
authenticity. 